It is in 1916 that Jassasa went to work with British spies, British spies in Arabia. Lawrence of Arabia, of course, is the most well-known of them. These British spies were sent into Arabia, posing as Muslims. And they went to two actors in Arabia, two. One was Sharif Hussein, Sharif al Hussein, who was appointed by the Khalifa in Istanbul as the Sharif of the Hejaz, Mecca and Medina, in control. Mecca was under the control of an Arab battalion, but Medina was under the control of a Turkish battalion. And I wish I could understand why the Khalifa insisted on the Turkish battalion under the under the leadership of Fakhri Pasha to defend Medina. I don't know why. So when the British spies went to Hussein, they offered him the moon. <laughs> they offered him the moon. We will liberate the land of the hated Ottoman Turks and we will give you independence and freedom and you will now become the king of the Arabs. Remember, Britain is not talking about Khalifa, Khilafa, eh? No, no, we'll make you the king of the Arabs. And we also prepared to offer you a little, you know what? Just seven million pounds. Huh? Seven million pounds at that time is what Bill Gates has now. Sharif Hussein, the great-great-grandfather of Abdullah, in Jordan now, then betrayed the Prophet Muhammad betrayed 1400 years of history of this Ummah, violated the plain and clear command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran in Suratul Ma'idah, in which he commanded us, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu la tat do not take the Jews and do not take the Christians as your awliya. Do not establish an alliance with them in which you become dependent upon them and subservient to them. Do not do that, says Allah. Ba'aduhum awliya wa they are protecting friends of each other. وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ Whosoever from amongst you turn to them for that kind of an alliance. You no longer belong to this ummah. You now join them. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ Surely Allah will never provide guidance for a people who commit such an atrocious act of wrongdoing. And this is precisely what Sharif Hussein did and what all his descendants from that day to this day have been doing. But the chickens are coming to home to roost now for Abdullah. And the chickens are coming home to roost for Abdullah. When Mr. Bush attacks Iraq, then you're going to see Abdullah's suitcase is at work. <laughs> yeah. hey, they're all packed already, you know. <laughs> they're all packed already. As soon as Mr. Bush attacks Iraq, you'll see where Abdullah is going to be heading for. Sharif Hussein now accepts 7, 000, 7 million sterling pounds and enters into a military alliance with Britain and declares himself independent of the Ottoman Khalifa. Once the Khilafah in Istanbul had lost control of Mecca and Medina, had lost control of the Haramain, had lost control of the Hajj, you pull the carpet, you pull the rug from underneath the feet of the Khalifa. His Khilafah is now losing legitimacy. Can anyone be Khalifa? Can you appoint a Khalifa here in downtown Lakemba? Can Mullah Umar have been recognized as the Khalifa? No, why not? Because when the Hajj comes, Amir al Mu'mineen Mullah Umar will have to apply for a Saudi visa to perform the Hajj. <laughs> huh? 
And if the Saudis reject the visa, the Khalifa can't perform the visa, the Hajj. Alright? And so the British calculated, if we can wrest control of the Haramain and the Hajj away from the Khalifa in Istanbul, then the legitimacy of his Khilafah will begin to crumble. And so this was 1916. The British spies then went to the second actor in the Arabian Peninsula. I mean, Britain has a PhD in deception. If you want to destroy the Khilafah, okay, you have to make sure that it cannot be restored. How can you take the entire world of Islam with so many ulama and ensure that not only is the Khilafah destroyed, but it cannot be restored. That's a tall order. How to do it? The answer is, you not only have to liberate the Haramain from the control of the Khalifa in Istanbul, but you have to put it in the control of those who will not themselves claim the Khilafa and will not allow anyone else to claim the Khilafa. And so long as these people keep control of the Haramain and the Hajj, the Khilafa can never be restored. Simple, isn't it? Simple, isn't it? And so that is why they had to make the trip to Riyadh to meet. What's his name? Abdul Aziz Ibn Saud. Correct name? Of course it's the correct name. Why are you afraid to mention it? <laughs> but Abdul Aziz Ibn Saud did not control the Hijaz. So he couldn't command the check for seven million pounds. Huh? He had to be content with something less than that. So what the British offered to him was if you would sign the same kind of agreement with us and violate the specific command in the Quran and betray Allah and his messenger and betray the Ummah, if you will do that, we pay you five thousand pounds a month. Would you accept that? Abdul Aziz says, yes. Yes. <laughs> and in 1916, Abdul Aziz ibn Saud signed an agreement with Britain. Yes. Which made of him a military ally of Britain, subservient to Britain. But when the Ikhwan, who were his military force, questioned him, how can you sign this agreement with Britain? And how can you accept this money from Britain, 5,000 pounds a month? Abdul Aziz ibn Saud says, this is jizya. <laughs> jizya is what they pay to me because I control them. It was dust in their eyes and they swallowed it. And so Abdul Aziz Ibn Saud got away with it. Massive betrayal and a very dangerous plan is now in place. As soon as the Khilafah is destroyed, that Abdul Aziz Ibn Saud will be given what is known as the green light, something that Saddam Hussein knows about, the green light. And then he will attack and take control of the Haramain. And when once he does that, he won't make the mistake of ever claiming the Khilafah for himself. And he will never allow anyone else <laughs> to claim the Khilafah. Because no one else can take the control of the Hijaz and the Haramain from them. Because they are supported by Britain. And so goodbye to the Khilafah. It's gone. It can never be restored. Never, never, never be restored. So long as Britain 
and the United States of America underwrite the security of the Saudi state, you can never, never, never restore the Khilafah. By 1919, the Ottoman Empire was in shambles, falling apart. And a British army under General Allenby, with many Arabs and Punjabi Muslims fighting faithfully under his control, attacked the Turkish garrison which was defending Jerusalem, defeated it, and liberated the Holy Land. This was a joyous day for the Jews, because now the countdown is really moving forward. And the golden age is coming age is coming back. In the same 1919, when the Ottoman Empire is collapsing and it is losing all its non-Turkish possessions, all the Arab parts of the Ottoman Empire are falling away, the Greek army now invades the Turkish mainland, Anatolia. And the Turkish people now have a tremendous fright in their hearts because the Greeks hate them with a PhD in hatred. <laughs> so Britain now has to create a Turkish general who would appear to the Turkish people as a savior who has come down from the heavens with his hands resting on the wings of angels to save the Turkish people. And so at a place called Gallipoli, a man named Mustafa Kemal inflicts a defeat on the ruling state in the world, Britain, and immediately climbs the ladder to become the hero of all heroes in Turkish history. Very convenient, isn't it? <laughs> 